The SIGGRAPH conference is nigh, motion design Emmy noms are announced, and the most useful After Effects plugin on Earth has a new release. It's Motion Mondays, buckle up. But first, do you know the reason why After Effects and Premiere composition guides show you action safe and title safe areas? Hit the subscribe button and then stick around until the end to find out. SIGGRAPH, the Woodstock of computer graphics, kicks off July 28th in Denver. Imagine NAB but geekier and with a 3D obsession. This year, there are big name keynotes like Mark Zuckerberg and Jensen Huang, but let's be real, you wanna go for the parties and for the mind-bending new technology. Speaking of parties, School of Motion is co-sponsoring a MoGraph meetup at SIGGRAPH with our pals at Maxon. It's happening at Ratio Beer Works and it's your chance to rub elbows, hats, and pants with the legendary EJ Hassenfratz. And did I mention, it's free. Just make sure to reserve your spot before they're gone. The link is in the description. And if you can't make it to Denver, no worries. Maxon's got you covered with live streams from their booth. You can catch EJ's first ever ZBrush demo and presentations from a host of School of Motion friends like Luis Miranda and Jen Van Horn. It's just like being there without the altitude sickness. SIGGRAPH is also when all the big brains drop their technical white papers like this one, which in a personal affront to me and my kind, showcases a new technique for hair rendering that allows for crazy performance gains over traditional methods. New tech like this typically takes a couple of years to work its way into our tools, but it's always fun to get a sneak peek. Keep an eye out and we'll be covering the coolest ones that could shape the future of our industry. I recently stumbled across this clever Photoshop technique for grunging up your designs and lo and behold, it works in After Effects too. Let's break it down with this simple example. Start with an adjustment layer and add some noise, but not just any noise. Go for the HLS auto noise because it can animate and you can set it to grain mode and change the size of the noise. Dial in the noise to taste and you can always change this later. Slap on a Gaussian blur to soften the noise. And this is where the magic happens. Add a levels effect, bring that white input down to remove some background noise, and then boost the black input to fill in the gaps. And voila, instant grungy texture. I like to add a little bit of sharpening to crisp up those edges. And then for the cherry on top, throw in a tint effect, a touch of warmth in the whites and the blacks. It helps keep things from looking too stark. And then finally, for that lo-fi hand animated feel that everybody loves, add posterized time set to eight frames per second. And then you can just play around with the settings, smaller grain for detail, looser levels for an aged look. It's a versatile technique, and you can probably figure out ways to extend this if you experiment. And I'm curious what you think. Are quick tips like these useful? Should we do more of them in Motion Mondays? Please let us know in the comments. Hold on to your wallets, folks. Overlord 2 has officially landed, and it's about to make your workflow smoother than my scalp. This amazing plugin, the darling of After Effects artists everywhere, has just gotten a very serious upgrade. For the uninitiated, Overlord lets you copy and paste between Illustrator and After Effects like their long lost lovers finally reunited. But version two has been granted even more superpowers. There's a slick new desktop app for easy plugin management and installation, support for track mats in After Effects, text on a path that actually behaves, better gradient support, better live shape integration, and it's faster and more reliable. Creator Adam Plouffe, in his benevolence, made it a one-time purchase. No subscription needed. You simply pay for the plugin or pay for a renewal fee that gives you the latest version of the tool plus one year of free upgrades. And after that, you can use the tool forever or upgrade it again after a few years if the tool gets some new capabilities that you want. If you use Illustrator and After Effects together, just go grab the plugin right now, seriously. You'll wonder how you ever lived without it. It's like discovering coffee for the first time. For more information and a sweet demo, check out School of Motion instructor Jake Bartlett's overview video for all the details. Jake breaks it down as only he can do. Overlord 2 is available now, link in the description. The final countdown has begun for our summer 2024 mini session. In just one week, students from every corner of the globe will embark on their motion design odyssey, and you could be right there with them. We're running sessions of After Effects Kickstart and Photoshop and Illustrator Unleashed. It's the most fun and effective way to learn the world's most popular design and animation tools. Our guided sessions feature unlimited critique from professional motion designers who've been in the trenches and lived to tell the tale, a 24 seven worldwide community of artists, monthly live streams that feature industry topics and portfolio reviews, and enough project files and resources to keep you busy until GTA 6 arrives. Get all of the info and register now at the link in the description and we hope to see you next Monday. Motion designer Graham Shepard recently conducted a fascinating experiment to answer the question, is it possible to 3D track footage created by Runway's Gen 3 AI model? And the results surprised me. 
Turns out you can indeed track this artificial footage, and this suggests that these AI models are creating worlds with consistent perspective and parallax, which is no small feat for a system that's essentially just making it up as it goes along. It's kind of like watching a toddler accidentally solve a Rubik's Cube. In Graham's post, he drops some wisdom that really resonated with me. He notes that while AI tools are impressive, they're not the be all and end all. They might get you 80 or 85% of the way there, but that last 15 to 20%, which is crucial, especially on client work, that's where the human element is required. This experiment highlights a crucial point in the AI debate. These tools are at their best when they're paired with human artistic expertise. If AI tools act as tools, not as fully automated art generators, there's actual utility. What do you think? This is an AI topic, so you know what to do. Comments, please. I thought this was cool and maybe a sign of the times. So meet The Little Labs, a studio that's positioning themselves as a full service animation and interactive design studio. They've got a great portfolio of traditional motion design work, but they're also embracing tools like Rive to bring motion design into the interactive realm. And what I think is interesting about this is that interaction design is still sort of bleeding edge in the world of motion, and there aren't a ton of artists or studios out there flying the flag for it yet. This means there's an opportunity to be one of the first companies niching down into interaction design, setting them up to be seen as the experts in this new area. I recently had a great conversation with motion designer Connor Hankel, an artist who's become a go-to for sports arena and stadium graphics, a niche that's pretty small, but it's big enough for him to get consistent high-level work without having to compete against tons of other options. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you don't miss that interview when it drops. I think The Little Labs is doing something similar, setting themselves up to be viewed by potential clients as experts in the field. And there's still plenty of time to be early on this and to build a moat around their business. Check out their experiments tab for a taste of their Rive prowess in action. And they've also got a blog with a great article about how they see Rive influencing motion in the near and far future. And creating content like that, it's not just showing off, it's also about educating potential clients on these powerful new tools. It's marketing, sure, but it's also pushing the entire industry forward. And speaking of pushing the industry forward, keep your eyes peeled for our upcoming Rive course. We're going deep into this game-changing app. More on that soon. Did you know that Bend, Oregon is secretly a hotbed of motion design talent? It's true. They've even got their own conference. The annual Bend Design Conference is gearing up for its 2024 edition, running from October 17th to 18th. And this year, there's a neat twist. Killer Motion Designer and School of Motion Teaching Assistant Ryan McCauley is organizing a motion design gallery exhibit called Kinetic Communique during the event. And here's where it gets really exciting. There's an open call for artists to submit their work. That's right, this is your chance to see your masterpiece displayed in a real life gallery. Just imagine it, your animation up on a wall with people sipping fancy drinks and nodding thoughtfully as they admire your handiwork. So to throw your hat into the ring, just fill out the form linked in the description. And while you're at it, check out the Ben Design Conference too. It's always packed with great speakers covering everything from design and illustration to branding and motion. It's like a Vegas buffet of creative inspiration. Put your hands together for our School of Motion Student of the Week, Anna Cannon, with a name that would make Thor jealous. Anna has been doing amazing design work in Atlanta and recently decided to add motion design to her skill set. In our After Effects Kickstart course, Anna completed our infamous epic lyric smackdown exercise and crushed it. We commissioned real rappers to create these After Effects themed lyrics, so let's check out Anna's work. Yeah, I got a mat you can track. Keep Frango on the attack. You need a freak off the handle. All of the layers are stacked. <laughs> I love it. Congrats, Anna Cannon. I hope your new motion skills serve you well. And if you're watching this and you want to get comfortable in After Effects quickly, check out After Effects Kickstart launching next Monday. Attention 3D artists, the legendary Chicago-based studio Swarovski is on the lookout for fresh talent to join their ranks both full-time and freelance. This powerhouse studio led by industry legend Aaron Swarovski has been churning out award-winning work for years. They've worked on major film title sequences for Marvel blockbusters, advertising campaigns, broadcast packages, and show titles, and everything in between. They're also deeply engaged with the motion design community. Their Swarovski Lab series invites artists to Chicago for a few days of intensive learning and collaboration with their top-notch team. I've actually spoken at one of these events before, and they are a blast. Speaking of Chicago, if you land a full-time gig with Swarovski, you will get to call the Windy City home. And let's be real, having access to the world's best deep dish pizza is a pretty sweet perk of the job. So whether you're looking for a full-time position or you want to add an impressive name to your freelance client list, it's time to polish up that demo reel. And then check out the form linked in the description and get after it. 2024 main title design Emmy nominees are here and they're 
all bangers. This year's lineup is a who's who of motion design royalty with antibody, elastic, and imaginary forces sweeping the category. Let's break it down, shall we? Elastic, the studio behind the iconic Game of Thrones opener, has done it again with their gorgeous Shogun sequence. It's so beautiful, and the show itself is also amazing if you haven't seen it. Antibody's The Three Body Problem title sequence is my personal favorite. It's kind of like if M.C. Escher and Stephen Hawking had a baby, and then that baby made title sequences or something like that. All of these titles are masterclasses in composition, concept, and execution. Check out Imaginary Forces, clearly Saul Bass-inspired titles for Palm Royale for Apple TV. Stunning. It's the kind of work that makes you want to both bow down in reverence and then immediately open After Effects to try and recreate it. And spoiler alert, it's a lot harder than it looks. If you want to dive deeper into the world of title design, check out the Stash blog post to watch all of the nominated sequences. And for those of you who want more title design insights, don't miss our interview with Imaginary Forces co-founder Karen Fong on the School Motion podcast. You can also find the video on this channel. Check out the show notes to watch all of these title sequences. There's some of the best pieces of work to come out this year. And no matter how much experience you have, there is plenty to be inspired by. And one last bit of news. Adobe has introduced Generative Shape Fill, a new illustrator tool that can create vector artwork from a prompt. The short version is you select a vector shape and you prompt Illustrator with how you'd like that vector filled in, like a digital genie ready to grant your vector wishes. I took this new tool for a spin with the School Motion logo, asking it to fill our shapes with molten iron at the forge because nothing says motion design education like molten metal. The result, eh. It's not bad for a start, and because it's all vector, that means you can scale it to any size, manipulate it, send it to After Effects with your new Overlord 2 plugin. And there are some additional controls you can access, like detail levels, styles, and you can even throw in reference images or choose from presets. Now, let's be real for a second. Like any AI tool, these results can be hit or miss. A lot of times it's miss. Sometimes you get something usable. Many times you do not. But for some projects, maybe this saves you time. The tool is in beta, but it's live in Illustrator now, so go check it out and let us know what you think in the comments. And that wraps up this week's edition of Motion Mondays. So what's the deal with title and action safe? So you remember those bulky CRT TVs from the 80s and 90s? They're the reason behind those mysterious title safe and action safe guides in After Effects and Premiere. See, back then, TVs would often cut off the outer 10% of the frame. So designers had to play it safe. The outer lines or action safe warned that anything beyond might be completely covered up by the viewer's TV bezel, the border of the TV. The inner lines or title safe ensure that your text wouldn't be awkwardly touching the screen's edge, making for uncomfortable reading. And in the early days of HD, you had to protect for both 16 by nine and four by three crops, which sucked. Hence this inner set of action and title safe guides. While these things aren't really applicable to online content today, they're still relevant in broadcast. And I can remember the days of clients literally rejecting final deliveries for crossing these sacred lines. I'm actually curious, how important are these guides in today's media landscape? Are any of you still wrestling with action safe and title safe in your deliverables? Drop a comment and let us know if these ghosts of television past still haunt your dreams. And in the meantime, don't forget to register for the After Effects Kickstart or Photoshop and Illustrator Unleashed session, which starts on Monday, August 5th. We hope to see you in class. See you soon.